He's confident. He's smart, witty, dynamic, vicious, brutal, vindictive, a monster. And he will win through intimidation and forceful tactics if need be. I'm not like that. In fact, I don't know anyone like that. Do you? They're the Auburn Tigers, and they are currently America's best team. Sitting in the top 15 of both offensive and defensive efficiency per Ken Palm, the Tigers are a bona fide juggernaut that makes life for every opponent hell on earth. Whether it's Walker Kessler swatting all your layups, Wendell Green Jr. burying a Steph Range 3 in your face, or Jabari Smith Jr. just doing things you'd expect a top NBA prospect to do, Auburn just never gives you a break. And with a diverse set of weapons and a coach that knows how to use them, it really looks like Auburn is a legitimate national championship contender. And honestly, there might not be a better year to be one. This is the Year of the Tiger. If you know anything about Chinese New Year, you'd know that each celebration features one of 12 animals. Back in 1999, the year in which I was born, it was the Year of the Rabbit. And I was jealous because all my friends born in 2000 got the Year of the Much Cooler Dragon. While I've come to terms with my disappointing Chinese New Year animal, let's focus on this year's upcoming celebration because an awesome year could be lining up for guys like him, 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 and them. And why? Because of course everyone, 2022 is the year of the tiger, and Auburn is fully embracing it. When Bruce Pearl first got to Auburn in 2014, he said, I don't know how long it will take, but it's time to rebuild the Auburn basketball program and bring it to a level of excellence. You may have heard something similar, but that's because it's literally every single coach's opening statement. That same year, I'm sure coaches like Danny Manning, Wake Forest, fired, Jim Christian, Boston College, fired, and Steve Wojciechowski, Marquette, fired, all had similar goals, but Pearl actually delivered. By 2018, Auburn had already won the SEC for the first time in 20 years, 2019 saw a miraculous Final Four run as a 5 seed, and 2020 saw them get ranked as high as 4th in the country. While 2021 was a down year for the Tigers due to injuries and NCAA sanctions, this year's team has come roaring back to be ranked number 1 in the country for the first time in program history. Say what you want about Pearl, but his resurrection of a program that hadn't been to an NCAA tournament since 2003 shows a level at which Pearl operates. And this season might be his magnum opus. Pearl's current roster is a perfect encapsulation of what makes him such a great leader of a program. Auburn has the five-star freshman who's going to be a top three pick in the draft this year in Jabari Smith Jr. They have another five-star big man in Walker Kessler who came to Auburn via the transfer portal. Pearl also managed to grab guys like Katie Johnson, Wendell Green Jr., and Zepp Jasper from the portal, who are all now major contributors, and he's also shown a proficiency in player development through guys like Alan Flanagan, Devin Cambridge, Jalen Williams, Dylan Cardwell, Lior Berman, and Chris Moore, who have been at Auburn for several years and keep improving. Also, did you notice how many players I just had to name? Yeah because Auburn right now is playing 11 guys over 10 minutes a game. And while that number is going to decrease as the season moves forward and rotations become tighter, it's still a display of the embarrassment of riches Pearl has at his disposal. While Auburn's depth should be noted, it's still true that only five players can be on the court at once. And while some teams have depth because nobody separates themselves, think about how the Chicago Bears always have like three average to mediocre quarterbacks on the roster, save us Justin Fields, Auburn doesn't fall into this category because they have legitimate top-end talent. Let's start with the freshman phenom Jabari Smith Jr. A 6'10 forward with a ridiculously smooth jumper, Jabari Smith should be the number one overall pick in the 2022 NBA Draft if you're asking me. Jabari gives Auburn such a lift because he can literally get a shot whenever he wants, and his versatility makes him useful in any offensive situation. He can go to work in the post, as he does here, he can spot up from three-point range where he's knocking down over 40% of his attempts, and he can even create his own offense off the dribble. In terms of a scoring repertoire, Jabari Smith is like Hermione in that one Harry Potter scene, because he's got everything in his bag. While he's not a finished product offensively, he's still an absolute nightmare to deal with at the college level because of this well-rounded scoring. Defensively, Smith can switch and provide rim protection as well, but the star of Auburn's defense is Walker Kessler. The transfer from North Carolina has terrorized offenses all season long as he's currently blocking four shots a game and impacting many more. His block rate of 18.1% leads Division 1, and just his presence alone makes opponents think twice about attempting shots on him. Watch here how Kessler's presence forces Eric Gaines to reroute midair, leading to an Auburn block. Offensively, Kessler has emerged as one of the best play finishers in the country, as he has 49 dunks on the season, and these primarily come from a variety of lobs and putback opportunities. Auburn loves to run this play where Kessler will set a screen at the top of the key and then roll to the paint for a lob. And due to his 7-1 frame, he's almost always open. With Kessler and Smith, Auburn has the most dominant front court in the country. 
This level of self-created scoring and impactful game-altering defense would make Auburn an extremely difficult team to beat by itself, but the Tigers also have a trio of guards that make this team even more fearsome. Katie Johnson is a transfer from Georgia, and when he's not playing basketball, he should be auditioning for every serial killer role in every movie, because I haven't seen more terrifying expressions from a basketball player ever. Here's Bruce Pearl's take on Johnson's energy. He's gonna make some shots too, and he's confident, and there are times he'll make a shot, It'll look over me. It'll kind of, you know, I don't even know what he's saying. But KD shouldn't get too committed to acting because he's a damn good basketball player and a key part of Auburn's national championship aspirations. Johnson's 13.3 points a game are second on the team behind Jabari's 15, and he provides energy for the entire roster. It makes sense that he came from Georgia because KD is an absolute bulldog. He is physical at the rim and gets to the free throw line a team leading 4.7 times a game. He hits key momentum shots as well, and his intensity and energy translates to the defensive end where he's snatching over two steals a game. Johnson's physicality blends nicely with the skillful game of Wendell Green Jr. A transfer from Eastern Kentucky, Green is the sixth man for this Auburn team, but he still averages around 13 points and 5 assists per game, and is third on the team in minutes. Green is an apt last name for Wendell because he always has the green light. He isn't afraid to launch heat check threes or make audacious moves with the ball, and a lot of times it pays off. Just like how you can't eat only one Lay's potato chip, Wendell Green Jr. can't only make one three. His scoring comes in massive spurts that usually give Auburn momentum or just seal another victory entirely. Green just makes things happen. And finally, there's Zepp Jasper, a transfer who spent the last three years at Charleston where he was first team all CAA and CAA all defense. While Johnson and Green thrive off momentum and energy, Jasper is more collected and solid. He's smart with the ball as he leads a team in assist to turnover ratio, and acts as a nice glue guy when paired next to the more explosive Auburn players. The Tigers are also solid on the wing with Alan Flanagan coming back from an Achilles injury and now offering starters minutes, and guys like Devin Cambridge and Jalen Williams coming off the bench and providing versatile defense and in-between scoring. The potential re-emergence of Flanagan though, who was a 14 point a game scorer last year, might make this team even more dominant. While Auburn's 19-1 start needs to be appreciated and applauded, it's also obvious that they have a lot of close calls on their resume, and they've overcome double-digit deficits against Ole Miss, Kentucky, and Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. Still, I think it's important that Auburn won all those games, and remember that their one loss on the year came in double overtime to UConn. This team just doesn't give up. I've been waiting for the letdown game, a game where Auburn's fire starts to diminish, but it just doesn't seem to happen. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'd be familiar with the losing formula, which states that a team needs to lose at least once after January 31st in order to win a national championship. And it might just be me, but Auburn seems to be due for a loss. And whether that loss happens in February or the tournament, it doesn't change the fact that I'm still extremely impressed with how every game they play seems like the Super Bowl. Can this attitude sustain itself all year, or is a burnout coming? I'm not sure, but I think Auburn might be a rare team that can play at this intensity the entire season. And if I'm right about that, then 2022 could be Auburn's year. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you think below.